Hi there, and welcome to this part of the FragTrade Bot AI capabilities. In this video, I will talk about some of the fundamental concepts and background processes the bot uses when backtesting and trading with machine learning and artificial intelligence. And this brings me directly to the following sheet where I want to manage some expectations here. This video is a high level overview of the bot's working process. And to explain that clearly, I'll also have to talk about some AI and ML concepts. However, quickly learning AI and machine learning in a short video like this is not possible. So if you want to get more knowledge and details about some of these concepts, then you'll have to read up on the documentation or watch some of the excellent videos that YouTube hosts on these subjects, like I did. And this brings me also to the fact that I am not a scholar or a student on AI and machine learning, but I had to learn all these things myself. I am an autodidact and I like to use the Feynman technique to learn new things. So all in all, the crux of the warning here is that I am not an expert in this field and my knowledge comes from other creators, which might be oversimplified or incorrect due to my personal interpretations. So if I am unclear or simply plain wrong on a subject, then be aware of this and please forgive me for that. And if you can correct me about some points, then please put it in the comment section below so that everyone, including me, can profit from your input as well. Now let's start with the actual subject of this video. The Fractrade developers have an excellent website which contains extensive documentation which is pretty well maintained and very detailed. Nonetheless, I think that their assumption is that the reader already has a certain level of knowledge on AI and machine learning when they embark on the FRAC AI journey. Reading this documentation front to back in a chronological order is not for the faint of heart and I had to read it a couple of times before I could understand the gist of the system. So after I have read these documents, I wanted to translate these into a video that is easy to explain and understand for beginners and I struggled a pretty long while to find the right approach for it. But now I think I found a good format, which hopefully makes absorbing all this knowledge a lot easier for you. In this case, I will use the following picture that fortunately for us is available on the Fractrade website and which shows you an overview of the data process that the bot uses. I will go over each step here and explain some of the AI and ML concepts that are used within each step. Again, I will keep it pretty high level and I will not go into the actual code. I hope that by doing it this way, you have an overall understanding first and will grasp the concepts, which will be discussed in later videos, better. And if you do, then you will come pretty far using this bot's AI features when we are drilling down to more coding details in later videos. In this video, I will discuss the first half of this process. And in the future video, I will go over the second half. I think that this is beneficial for the speed of uploading videos so that you can gain knowledge about these bot features in a faster pace. And it will keep the length of these videos relatively short as well. So let's start right away with the first step. Which is the user strategy section. And we already come across terms that need some explanation namely base features, targets and predictions. Let me explain first what these things are. The best way I can explain what a feature is, is to describe it as the AI and machine learning term for a property or a variable of an item. If I take the example of a trading candle here, then this is the object. And the features of a trading candle are the date, open, high, low, close and volume to begin with. If I add additional indicators, like the MACD over here, then each candle gets more columns with information about that specific candle. And all these additional values per candle are also called features. In other words, a feature is a property of a candle, which is represented in a row. Now each of these rows is called a sample, item or data point in machine learning. And these terms are sometimes used interchangeably. And one sample with all its features is called a feature vector. It contains all the features in one sample. 
Now the interesting part here is that all these features can be used in a machine learning model to predict if a future candle will be going up or down, which uses classification, or what possible future values will be, which uses regression analysis. And these future values are called targets, which is the second thing in this diagram. In the frag trade documentation, it states that frag AI trains a model to predict the target values based on the input of custom indicators. For example, here I have a small data frame and I want to ask the model to determine what the next target or future candle values would look like. But what I also can do is use a model to predict the outcome per feature factor. And that model can then classify if each sample is bullish or bearish based on the features of that sample. And the outcome is then a label that is added to the newly added column in the data frame. Later I will go deeper into the determination of the outcome per candle or the prediction of new candles. But it is important to understand these terms first, so let's continue with this. Now here you see I have all the data in the data frame. And of course this has another term in machine learning, because here all these samples and features together are what they call a features matrix. And this feature matrix contains the training data which the machine learning model uses for its predictions. And this training data is also called something else, it's called input value x. The targets or labels in the outcome column here are called the output value or y. So you can now say that a model can predict that the outcome y can be derived from the input values from x which will be done if you make use of the machine learning models. Now based on this information, a model can learn to recognize patterns in data and can then, in theory, create a pretty precise prediction about future events. These predictions can then be used to guide decisions such as, in our case, identifying the future price direction of a cryptocurrency pair. Based on these predictions, we can decide also to enter a long or a short trade. The FragTrade bot has the option to use backtesting and live data for trading and deploying an adaptive learning model. And it periodically does a retraining of this model based on the new candle information that enters the training. Based on this newly entered information, the model gets retrained to update its predictions and be as actual as possible to current market circumstances. These new models are retrained as quickly as possible, but you can configure these settings in the config file. You also can configure how much old models should be expired after a certain number of hours. Now you could also use only the open, high, low, close and volume information to take future predictions, but you can also add additional information to the features matrix to help support making the correct predictions. Which brings us to the second step in this process. And that is to expand the future sets to include more than these basic date and OHLCV features. And I already mentioned the MACD earlier as an example to add more features to the features vector of a single data point. To be more precise here, if you have a trading algorithm that uses a special indicator like my MACD example, RSI, Bollinger or else, then you can also add this indicator information to the complete features matrix. This additional information can then help the machine learning model to determine more accurate target values for your strategy and helps to make better predictions for trading decisions. Now, this expanding of features is part of what the FragTrade developers call feature set engineering and can be done at two levels. The first level of engineering happens in the strategy file. And in this strategy file, the base features can be extended with all kinds of indicators, like this RSI, ATR, MACD, Keltner channels, Bollinger bands, and many more from all kinds of TA libraries. And all these low value features are set in the different feature engineering functions. Meanwhile, there are also high level features. Features at this level are handled in the config file on the bot within the features parameter section and can include correlated pairs, informative timeframes or recent candles. These high level features can then call to the features that are defined in the low level base. And together they can expand the complete feature set. Now you have to be aware that there can be many, many combinations of high and low level features which can then be added to the data frame. 
which can then result in a very large feature matrix per pair. And having a feature vector of over 100 features can easily be created if you don't watch out here. Multiply this with a dataset of 10 years worth of 5 minute data, and you'll end up here with a collection of over 100 million data points per pair. By the way, did you notice that I already used the machine learning terms that I explained earlier here? And if you could follow my story up until this moment, then you are well on your way to understand the rest of the Freq AI functionalities as well. So let's continue quick. Now, remember the 100 million data points per pair I told you about earlier? Well, there is no doubt that this data is not 100% all needed. There should at least be some filtering to determine which data is relevant. It's also possible that there is data that is faulty or lies outside the threshold for using in the machine learning models. Which brings us to the third step in this process and the last step yet I will explain in this video. And that's the cleaning of features data before it's actually used in the model for training. Now as it says in the picture, this is part of feature set engineering, so besides adding data, like I said in the last couple of slides, you can also filter data. And I will show you some of the possibilities the bot has when the live or backtesting data is moving through the Frick AI data pipeline. To begin with the first one, this is not really a filter that removes data from the dataset, but it rather adds more weight to recent data than past data. Compare this a little bit with the exponential moving average here. The exponential moving average also adds more weight to present data. You can do this as well to the data that is used in the pipeline. Another functionality that can filter data is the outlier detection. Outliers are data points that are significantly different from the rest of the data. They can be caused by errors in the data collection process or by unusual circumstances. And outliers can be removed using a variety of methods such as statistical outlier detection algorithms or simple thresholds. Some of the methods Freq AI uses are the similarity index, support vector machines and dbscan. The dissimilarity index in the example given on the FreqTrade website is about the dissimilarity on a 3D model. These indices are a common way to identify and remove outliers in those models, without going into too much details here. The model first calculates the average or maximum distance of the data points that already exist, which is called the threshold D. And then if a new data point enters the dataset, there will be a calculation to determine if this new point has a distance that is shorter or longer than the average of this dataset. If the new data point distance is bigger than D, and also bigger than 1, then there is sufficient evidence that the new data point is an outlier and will be filtered. This DI explanation is specifically based on the 3D model used here. There is also another method that is more focused on 2D models, like the features matrix of candlestick data. This is called K nearest neighbors based outlier detection. But since this is not specifically mentioned here on the site, I will not go deeper into this type of outlier detection. The second type to filter data which is mentioned however is the support vector machine, or SVM in short. SVM-based outlier extraction uses a trained support vector machine to classify data points into two groups, inliers and outliers. The SVM does this by creating a decision boundary, and any data points on the outlier side of the boundary are considered outliers. This method automates the process of identifying and extracting abnormal or noisy data from a dataset. The third option mentioned for filtering outliers is dbscan. This is a density-based clustering algorithm, which identifies outliers by classifying data points into three categories, core points, border points, and noise points. And any data point labeled as noise is considered an outlier. This method is effective in detecting outliers in datasets with varying cluster densities without needing to predefine the number of clusters. And again, do not expect formulas or details here on these filtering processes. These are just high level explanations here. Now to finish this video, I will go over the NAND truncation, normalization and dimension reduction. NAND stands for not a number. 
And you can imagine nonce in this context as calculations or data points that do not have a number and therefore contain the none indication. Now to avoid initial nonce in the data frame, the advice is to first set the startup candle count to the largest indicated time period and then multiplying it by 2. So in the case of the 200 SMA, you should set this value to 400. Now none values are often encountered when dealing with datasets and they can adversely affect the performance of machine learning models if not handled properly. However, just removing all these none values can lead to a loss of information and it may affect the representativeness of your dataset. So you should always consider when truncated datasets are still suitable for analysis or machine learning tasks. There are multiple ways to handle nonce with Pandas, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost or LightGBM and more, but always keep in mind the negative aspects as I just mentioned here. Oh and by the way, the documentation of Fractrate does not really mention non-truncation any further within this context, as far as I could find. The next subject normalization, also known as feature scaling, is a pre-processing technique in machine learning that rescales the features of a dataset to have a similar scale or range. The primary goal of normalization is to bring all the features of the dataset into a standard scale so that machine learning algorithms can learn from the data more effectively. Normalization is particularly important when features have different scales and this can lead to issues in some machine learning algorithms. For example, here are the summary stats of a data frame with the interest rates, employment and S&P price features. And you can see that the minimum and maximum values of each feature greatly differs from each other. The danger is that a machine learning model is going to add more weight to one feature over the other this way. And that's where normalization comes in. Normalization will create a new scale between 0 and 1 on which all these feature values are calculated. This way normalization can positively help algorithms like support vector machines, k-nearest neighbors and neural networks, where these previous large differences in feature scales can lead to suboptimal performance. The last thing I'm going to talk about is dimensionality reduction with principal component analysis. Now, PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique used in machine learning and data analysis to reduce the number of features or dimensions in a dataset while preserving as much of the important information as possible. The goal here is to find a projection that captures the largest amount of variation in data while reducing the amount of dimensions. For example, here you see a 3D plot with data points. And now it's reduced to a 2D plot without losing information. Even better, the new 2D plot looks to be more clear to understand and can even be used by other clustering models like k-mean model or support vectors. PCA or other dimensionality reduction techniques are used before both unsupervised or supervised methods in machine learning. But it's important to note that while PCA can be a powerful tool for dimensionality reduction, it may not always be appropriate for every dataset or problem. The choice to use PCA should be based on the specific goals of your analysis and the characteristics of your data. And with this explanation, I'm at the end of this video, where I wanted to explain the FRAC AI process to you. I wanted this to be a video that is not too long, but complete and clear enough for you to understand this process. Additionally, I wanted to introduce you to the language and terms that are used in AI and machine learning in such a way that this knowledge is also useful for you if you watch other videos on these subjects as well. And I sincerely hope that I succeeded here. If you found this video useful and at least learned a thing or two from it, then click the like button, subscribe and leave a comment if you want to. Also, if you found a mistake or can add information to this video, then please add it to the comment section below. I will very much appreciate this. So, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye!